Godzilla vs. Kong, we got Godzilla facing off against Kong, both of them being badasses in their own right, with Kong then losing very badly. <laughs> yeah, boy. Near the ending of Godzilla vs. Kong, it looks like they have an agreement, and Godzilla's like, bro, you really don't want to go down this road again, son. And as Godzilla goes to the ocean to lick his wounds, and also to bask in his triumph, Kong is left with a literal scars guard of his defeat and his place in the kaiju hierarchy. But now that we have a literal other landscape to explore, the Hollow Earth, and we know that there's a plethora of monsters and flora down there, things that are undiscovered, it only stands to reason that we're gonna see other stuff there. This is now Kong's home, but is he the only inhabitant like him? I already had theories that this was not the case, and they were also foreshadowing this like crazy. So of course, when we get the trailer, and when it was announced that we were getting the new empire with a new monkey person, honestly, I wouldn't surprise. What I was surprised about is freaking Kong or someone coming out of the earth looking like a whole ass bumblebee, or like he's about to snap half of the world out of existence. So let's take a look at this trailer, and I'm gonna comment on all the things and observations that I I've made. So we get a macro shot of what looks like a seismograph. This machine can detect the changes in the Earth's crust, like seismic waves. This indicates us that something is about to come out of the Earth, or there's some activity down there below. For most of human civilization, we believed that life could only exist on the surface of our planet. And now we know that there is a hollow earth. I mean, considering that the hollow earth is a very large, expansive region, we really didn't see much of it in the movie. The conversance that we possess about the hollow earth is even less than what Kong has. And us as the audience have only witnessed what we saw in Godzilla vs. Kong. This wasn't all of it, this was just the exposure to it. Little tidbits here and there of the dangers that this world has waiting around the corner and the type of animals that existed to live here. It's a very hostile place. I'd probably even argue it's more hostile than the surface of earth. So it makes me really excited that they're going to be expounding on this in the new empire. Not gonna lie, I absolutely love how they implement the seismograph scratching noises into the remix of the trailer to build suspense. It's not the first movie trailer that's done this, but it's the first I've seen that's used a seismograph to do it. I know, not really a big deal, but I pay attention to details like that. What else were we wrong about? Welcome to my world. Now, as you can see, the lyrics, or here, the lyrics say, welcome to my world. Who is singing that? Usually when they play songs like this, it's to parallel what the character on screen at the time is thinking or what he might be saying, because we know Kong can't talk in this movie, aside from the sign language. But they chose this song, maybe, to come across as a double meaning. Kong saying, welcome to my world, this is now my home, this is my world, and possibly just the hollow earth itself. Like, look at the hollow earth, look how verdant it is and lush. It's a lot more scintillating that we saw in Godzilla vs. Kong. In Godzilla vs. Kong, it had this mysterious, arid presence, maybe that was also because of the region. I don't know if there's seasons down here, but this definitely looks like it's in the middle of summer or spring. Then what the hell is that over there. What is that spew spew coming out of the ground? It almost looks like a big crystal thing that's connecting the upper and lower portions of the hollow earth. We also get the little psycho vulture mascots that we see in all the establishing shots of the hollow earth and anytime Kong is in the area it's almost like whenever we see Kong on screen he's a symbolism of Skull Island. They're the symbolism of Skull Island. It helps to set the tone for what you're about to watch. Watch you This world has more sea And I like how the lyrics are like, won't you come on in? Oh, this is so beautiful, man. I wanna go there. I wanna ride like my horse across these lands and hope that there's no freaking gopher holes in them. But this place, look at all the space he has to run. It's his home. He's a massive introvert. So he's like, I just wanna be left alone. And now I don't have to worry about Godzilla down here, dude. This is freaking awesome, bro. And they probably come to check up on him every now and then. They also have a facility down here as well. I'm sure Gia talks with him because they're like friends. And we're seeing places and areas of the hollow earth that we'd not seen before. So I'm all about this, bro. This is so exciting. The hollow earth has to be one of the things that I love the most about the MonsterVerse series right now because it's something new. This world has more secrets than we could possibly imagine. Yeah. Is she the same woman from before? Why does it reason? Is she? I don't even know if it's that same woman from before. It looks like the same woman with like 
a very horrible haircut. If it is, what was the point of that? Why do they always do that in the sequels? Like, you don't see the dudes doing that. The dudes get to keep their long hair or their short hair, regardless of what they had before. And the women are in a second movie, and it's like, chop all my hair off to prove that I'm badass or something? I don't know. It's just annoying. It could be a different person. I'm not sure. Like I said, the human characters were not at the forefront for me of what stood out, so give me if I forget them. I'll have to watch over the, Kong, the Godzilla vs. Kong movie just to get some reference of the humans. I forgot, like, five characters were in in the previous movie. This world has more secrets than we This world has more Oh, ho, ho, hold up. Remember what I said about the whole light thing? I've made several videos on this. I've made Hollow Earth videos and Godzilla vs. Kong videos about the supposed light source. You could see the rays of light from here. And I know that in like the previous scene, now we're getting these crystal things from here and here that are connecting. See, these, these crystal pillars. And I think these are what are giving off the daylight that we're seeing here. It could just be this region that's daylight. We see another one all the way to the right. And this would make sense that they're creating the light source. But there's also something else that I saw and I explained it in that video. But anyway, just a really cute detail. Can you imagine playing a video game like this? Like having a Godzilla Hollow Earth Kong video game and just having to live as Kong and survive throughout it? Why is the MonsterVerse not capitalizing on this? You know us gamers would love to have something like this in the interim? You can add extra lore in there. It's what I loved about the Telltale Jurassic Park game because there was just stuff in there that was like, damn, this should have been in the freaking movie. I So I actually looked up the song by typing in the lyrics that we're playing, and it's by someone named Jim Reeves. I guess it's a really old song. The lyrics say, welcome to my world, won't you come on in? Miracles, I guess, still happen now and then. Step into my heart, leave your cares behind. Welcome to my world built with you in mind. Knock and the door will open. Seek and you will find. Ask and you'll be given the key to this world of mine. I'll be waiting here with my arms unfurled, waiting just for you. Welcome to my world. Now it sounds like Kong would be singing this, but it also sounds like the hollow earth waiting to be discovered, saying, welcome. It's okay, I'm inviting. Come live in me, come explore me. This could also be an interpretation from the human's point of view, thinking that this is what the hollow earth would be saying. They feel like they're supposed to be exploring this, as does Kong as well. So Kong could also be interpreting this to mean explore. And do you notice how fluffy Kong is? It looks almost like he's wearing one of those Russian winter jackets made out of wolf carcass or bear. Like, I didn't notice until just now how freaking fluffed up he is, bro. That is the longest I've ever seen his fur. It almost looks, too, that he always shaved it. Like, it almost doesn't look like Kong. Like, looking at him, he looks way older. Is this Kong? Is this the same guy? I mean, he has the axe. But then it doesn't look like him. It looks like a very old version of him. And here's the thing. I could be wrong, but check out this next part of the trailer. Still now and then. Now, if that's supposed to be the antagonist, Scar King dude, that is possible that Kong, or the Kong that we see there, isn't Kong, but someone from the past who knew Scar King when he was a baby. This could be the origin scene that we're looking at right here of Scar King. This could also be foreshadowing of how big Scar King would get or how instrumental he would be. But looking at this Kong over here, it definitely does not look like our King Kong. Like, the face is different. I think this is someone who probably took in Scar King and raised him. I could be wrong. What is that? That's not Kong. So, bigger, better, faster, stronger. Already, this is painted in either blood or paint. And I like how they kind of foreshadow this to let us know that whatever this thing is that made this is way more dangerous and intimidating than Kong. And also bigger and a different species. That's not Kong. Did you see that? How we have those blue veins of power coursing throughout the hollow earth? Well, now we have these pink ones as well that look like the space Godzilla crystals. I only know what I've looked up and read up on the past Godzilla movies, but that looks space Godzilla pink to me. And why would there be pink now? Which means there's an alternate power. It's not just the blue power. There's pink power in there too, which means it must be different. They showcase them side by side. So what is the significance of this? And this obviously is a place that Kong has never been to before. 
What could have done this? And now you look at these skulls that are just piled on top of each other. This is not some sacred burying, burial ground. Like something actually killed these things. And the reason why I believe so, I may be wrong, but then you look at some of the skulls, it looks like they're damaged. Something killed a lot of Kong's ancestors and just dumped their bodies down here. Chances are it might not be Godzilla. There was a war between the Kongs and the Godzillas, but we have to also remember these are apes and uh, humans are apes. And just like humans war with each other in different tribes, apes do the same. So there's no reason to not believe that Kong's ancestors and different species would have been warring and vying for resources. Planet of the Apes though. Aren't they hot down there? Look, you can see a whole civilization of these things. Now this is probably the past because we saw that baby orangutan looking thing. Could be the past, could be the future. And this could be showcasing what happened to Kong's family. Now I'm looking at the body type of those creatures down there and they look like they're built like Kong. They don't look like they're built like Scar King, which has a more orangutan body type. They look more gorillian, if that makes sense. And it seems like everybody's getting along down here. They're all gathering like a family and just doing stuff, reading stories, bedtime, hooking up, having a beer. And this is probably the calm before the storm. <laughs> Then we see what we speculate to be Scar King. He looks very angry for some reason. Did Kong's family betray him or did he feel like he was betrayed by Kong's family? Maybe, you know, there was some kind of prejudice there because someone took him in. I mean, we saw that other Kong gorilla thing that I think is a past Kong, not our, our actual MonsterVerse Kong. And he probably took this little guy in, but if the orangutan type apes were fighting Kong's family, he might grow up with resentment realizing that his family was killed off by Kong's family. Maybe, or maybe he meets other orangutans, or maybe he finds the freaking burial ground full of his people, and he discovers that the people who raised him, that he looks nothing like, actually exterminated his kind, which would make him like, all right, I'm gonna kill every single Kong in sight. That's just me theorizing. I could be completely wrong, but at the time of this video, that's what I was going with. It would be some great motivation. Can you imagine? Like, he's a Loki of the story, and he's like, oh, my parents love me. Why don't I look like you, Dad? Why don't I look like you, Mom? And then some of the other mean kids are like, you're not even one of us, you asshole. That's why we killed all your your kind and then he's like wait what and then he finds out in a horrible way oh shit you committed genocide against my family oh hell no <laughs> oh my god they're so cute look at them oh my god they're like little big puppy things what are those they're so adorable they look like they're very angry what in the world what in the ice age sloth wolf Though I don't remember seeing things looking like this. I would want one. They're such cute puppies. And they're going after Kong. And I really do think that if those things were to eat him, yeah, he would die. He, he would die. Like, they would rip him to shreds. There's like freaking a hundred of them. And then we see Kong jump. Look at those trees. I know I am going in every which direction. But like, are those trees down there? No way. Maybe they're just shrubs, but they look like trees. And then you look at the size difference. Maybe they're not. No, because you see, no, there's other big trees on the left as well. Okay. But still, those things are freaking huge, man. Like, you gotta figure, they're almost as big as Kong. And consider how big Kong is in comparison to humans. Imagine a freaking huge-ass wolf beaver squirrel-looking thing coming at you. And it's the size of the Eiffel Tower. Like, that is some scary shit right there. <laughs> Okay, so we see these people. Wait, are these Gia's people? Because she was supposedly the last of her kind. And now we see these dudes looking quite angry behind them. So <laughs> there's a lot of people in civilizations probably that still exist down here, which means it's possible that Kong's family or remnants of his family still exist down here as well. So do you notice something? You see this pink light that's shining everywhere? This looks like Gia could be one of her people. I think it's her. I mean, is she gonna be older in this? Obviously, right? But now we see this pink light all around these humans. Like we see this in Kong's area in the Hollow Earth that they're surrounded by this blue power. Now, 
these people, this ancient civilization that's obviously been alive for a very long time, but this is in the present because we see old Atlanta over there, and they are focusing on this pink power source that obviously has a different meaning or a different type of power than the one that we've seen with the blue light. <laughs> Khan can't stop this on his own. So obviously we're gonna get other kaiju because obviously that does not belong to Kong or any of the apes that we've seen unless that's how their dick looks and I highly doubt that because then what would be the reason for it slamming into the ground like that? You know what I'm saying? Sorry. Um, what? It's possible that we're also just seeing the regular everyday mundane kaiju showing up where they shouldn't be. You know how expensive this is gonna be for infrastructure? We just finished building this back. Kind of tax you guys a little bit harder because it's not our fault these kaiju keep coming and breaking shit. Kong can't stop this on his own. Of course he can't because the humans are always needed for some reason. Or another kaiju is needed. And we see what looks like Gia walking up this long staircase. Probably she is reunited with her people and they accept her and she has to go up there and do God knows what, but you see her starting to like, uh, evaporate and she obviously looks older i'm pretty sure that's the same girl but what is this mysterious power and what does it do he won't be alone oh my god there is godzilla encased in something is that even our godzilla though because why is he there? Why is he in the hollow earth in the freaking tomb of crystallized ice? I'm honestly so confused because I want to know how he got there. Did he go there on purpose to power up? Because we know that after every fight that Godzilla has, he always comes back. He always returns more powered up, more desolating, and more adapted to deal with a problem he probably lost to before. Godzilla evolves and his body adapts very quickly. So, he might have realized that in having his ass handed to him from Mechagodzilla, that he was gonna need something more because he almost died with Mechagodzilla and if Kong hadn't been there, well, things probably wouldn't have looked so good for him. So now knowing that biologically, Godzilla's body is like, okay, we can't let that happen again. So we need to kind of do what we saw the enemy doing and take on a little bit of their power. And what's really interesting is that we see Mechagodzilla in his fight against Godzilla employ this reddish pinkish power against Godzilla's blue power. And Mechagodzilla's pink power wins against Godzilla's. So clearly he's more powerful. And it just really broke my heart seeing Godzilla writhe in pain like that. Poor guy. Oh, poor baby. That really hurt my heart. But Godzilla's body is probably like, <laughs> Well, fuck around I had, find out I did. You could tell Godzilla was rethinking like his life was flashing before his eyes. Oh my God. He was about to give him the King Kong treatment. <laughs> Like, this this, this kind of reminds me of the scene between Homelander and Butcher and Soldier Boy and Hugh. <laughs> what was going on with Godzilla, except Godzilla can't blast off into the freaking atmosphere. If you hear weird squeaking noises in the background, sorry, my mice are nursing and I guess the babies are ripping their tits off, just in case. Anyway, so now here lies Godzilla, or who we think is Godzilla, powering up and we see maybe this wasn't intentional, but some of that pink power is leaching into him. Over here looking like a whole ethos bedroom setup. Now I've never watched this Space Godzilla movie. I know of Space Godzilla, but this is exactly what Rose Godzilla over here put me in mind of. He looks amazing. <laughs> Let me get that iconic scene that we saw from the teaser if this guy's sitting on his throne of bones. He wants to watch the world burn because he probably lost his entire family. And I swear in the next image, it looks like I thought he was wearing a bandolier. Like, <laughs> But he's wearing a spinal cord of <laughs> like this guy is upset and he's also powered which I mentioned in my teaser analysis that I did a while back because he has glowing eyes like Godzilla. So he probably found a way to synthesize that power that's down there. So that's gonna make him a problem. I'm eager to see what kind of power he has. We also know he has intelligence to have the kind of ability to calculate committing genocide to Kong's people which is what I think he did. I could still be wrong, but I feel like that's where they're going with it. See, what did I tell you? So you have all Kong's people here, and now that he's bigger, he's like, y'all thought you were gonna get away with killing my family! 
family! He looks mad. He looks like he has a bone to pick with them, even though he's wearing bones, but this guy grew up really freaking angry. You can kind of understand his motivation. Doesn't make him any less than of a villain, but this is this is scary. And it's the reaction of all the Kongs too. Like, look how angry he is, bro. He looks like he's about to kill every single one of them. Like, oh no. And look at them, they look terrified. They look absolutely terrified. Oh no, I feel so bad. Maybe they're all looking for something. I think he probably ambushed them because it looks like they're like, oh, we're just waiting for a command or waiting to, they have war paint on. So it looks like they're in war or they're at least attempting to do something on some mission maybe. And when he comes, it looks like he cornered them there and maybe he's gonna kill them. And maybe that's where we see the grave. Maybe this is in the past. Are those people? Oh, there are cars. This is how big this guy is. So not only is he angry, but I guess he hates humans as well because they worship the Kongs, maybe. And this is a beach and you see those tiny little specks in the distance are humans running away. You know this is modern day because you can see the cars and the highway. I wonder what the people on the highway are thinking. <laughs> They're like looking over and I'm sure they hear and see this, but the cars are still driving. And they're probably like, that is fucked. I need to go to work though, because inflation is no joke. I am so sorry. Somebody will catch that. I'll catch you on the news later. Let me just get out of the vicinity. It's just this random ass car. Yo, did you notice that? Godzilla is a freaking power absorber. I swear to God. Look at that scene again. Y'all, you're like, Altieri, okay? Are you sniffing your ass? What is wrong with you? I distinctly remember Mechagodzilla having the same pose. It feels like something subtle to most people, but it's not subtle to me because it's the same camera angle shot. Their face wiggles the same way with it panning up to their red eyes or pink eyes with them looking threatening. It almost feels like Godzilla has taken on a little bit of the personality of Mechagodzilla. <laughs> what is happening? The trailer just went from zero to 60 real fast. Godzilla has his new power up and he's using it. I wonder what this power is going to do. Obviously, it's supposed to be more powerful than it was last time, right? Because obviously what he had last time was not good enough for him to win that fight. Then we see Godzilla busting out of the freaking ground into the hollow earth with his spit flying everywhere. And he's like, okay, we are about this business right now. I got my pink fit on. That means that we're thugging, son. Sorry. You're embarrassing yourself. The way they are running, like they have rockets in their feet. What is Kong wearing? How is Kong a land animal and he is struggling to keep up with Godzilla? <laughs> Lord of mercy, there is so much going on right now. I am so done. This is so, I am so excited, but also I'm so free. What is going on with God? Godzilla looks so different. He looks like a freaking dragon. Is this even Godzilla? He looks smaller. I'm confused. I'm so confused right now. I'm so excited, but I'm equally confused. What the frick is even happening? Look how Godzilla looks, his, sh his face is sharper. Is that Godzilla? I mean, we're supposed to believe it is, but he looks a lot smaller. Like he's in the foreground, Kong is in the background, but Godzilla is still smaller or the same size as Kong. So either Kong had a wicked mean ass growth spurt or Godzilla shrunk or Godzilla stopped growing. But maybe he needed to, I guess. What was he even doing in the hollow earth? Like, I mean, what is that glove that Kong is wearing? Did the humans make that for him? And clearly they feel threatened enough because, well, this other ape dude probably has powers that rivals, what, both of them together? And it would make more sense, honestly, if they were teaming up together after they were bested by this guy, not because of his power, but because of his intelligence. Now that would be interesting. Welcome to my Is that a much older Gian looks? But we know that this is probably going to be a baby version of the other guy. Maybe he has a son or there's one person left. Or maybe they just edited it this way to make us think that's what they're looking at. Why does that guy have so many things on his? Well, I think, okay, so this could be in the present. We got this baby orangutan thing. Could be the unknown son or last remnant of 
Scar King's family that he probably doesn't even know about. Or it could be a hybrid between that guy and a Kong. Because it does look a bit like Kong, does it not? Wouldn't that be interesting if he was a hybrid? I don't know, so many things to glean from this trailer. Is that a mini Kong? So one thing I will say is this trailer was fire, bro. I am so excited to see this. It looks bombastic. And it looks like we're gonna get some Planet of the Apes action. It does look like him though. Like he looks a lot like him, but like a little different. I mean, they both have that scar down their eye. They both have green eyes. So I think this is the same creature, which is like, if it is the same person, then this is probably a modern day Kong. Or it's possible Scar King has a child or a younger person that has exactly the same scar he does, which is unlikely. Cause you see the scar on his right eye. So no, it just makes me ask a lot more questions. Or, subverting expectations, the Kong or the little Scar King mini that we're seeing here is not actually what they're looking at like I said before. It's actually another type of Kong. The trailer wants you to think it's him, but it's not. This is probably still in the past. And when we watch the movie, we'll discover that there's an actual smaller actual Kong that looks more like King Kong, who will be the son of Kong. As someone said, Godzilla fans are eating good. Thanks so much for watching. This has been Ulturi. You ask, we answer.